Well, good morning, and hi, gang. Uh, here I am back again uh, with another short video. I think I'm doing a, a one-minute PBS spot or something. Uh, seems I've got the hots for these uh, old changers, and uh, previously I did the uh, dual 1007-1007 and was quite impressed with its performance considering the kind of changer early mid no early uh, 1960s changer. Um, I have had kicking around the basement for quite a while these two of these Phillips changers although mechanically um, very similar uh, there's cosmetic differences and the one thing about um, the changer that uh, actually is not going to survive is that um, uh, this changer originally came with just this platter here which is rim drive and it's I don't know eight inches or so but the one that uh, cannot be salvaged uh, had this ring attached to it which gives it more stability and more support for the record so I've uh, brought this one over to this uh, changer and I've done the cleaning and lube and while I'm definitely not a big fan of Philips changers they seem to be over complicated with lots of uh, fulcrums and and points and sliders and things like that that need cleaning uh, the the metal material seems to corrode and make a little fuzzy. I don't know what it is, whether it's pot metal or whatever. And the idler wheel, I haven't got access to the uh, idler wheel from the other one at the moment. But they're tiny. They're itty bitty things. And I thought, how chintzy can you get um, when uh, dual Garrard, uh, BSR, uh, Voice of Music, Seabreeze, all those ones, they have reasonably good, it's like two inch, two and a half inch diameter with lots of rubber, but not Phillips. So uh, regardless, uh, they seem to work. The uh, other one didn't survive basically because the idler, while the rubber was very supple, it is uh, extremely out of round and uh, I tried reshaping it a bit. It's it's impossibility. So um, I don't need to. Uh, they both had uh, cartridges with failing um, elements in them. And based on, let me turn the volume down, on the uh, many YouTube videos, I uh, took my Dremel, here, let me get in closer here, and uh, cut away the old elements, the old uh, cartridge bits, and these very, very inexpensive uh, uh, ch uh, Chinese uh, stereo cartridges, which I had thought were just a piece of junk. Um, it, it turns out they're not so bad. Uh, I only like the ones that have this um, rubber uh, insert and the the hollow tube shank that supports the actual stylus itself. The other ones are more reminiscent of the um, early 60s, late 50s where trackability was not even heard of for these things. At any rate, um, with a, a little bit of effort with uh, the Dremel, I managed to get the uh, uh, old elements out, uh, pried this top piece away, and uh, it's and soldered. And I'm not crazy about soldering uh, to cartridges, uh, but there really wasn't much uh, choice. Um, put it in from the back, which seems to be the best way it is. And I've learned a few things. This one's a little rugged looking, and uh, I've got another one since I had two changers. I have two uh, cartridges. I uh, push it in from the back and soldered it to the uh, connections here and they are uh, attached. Uh, once I put it in the changer and confirmed the tracking angle of uh, approximately 15 degrees which is what a good cartridge should track at, I put a drop of crazy glue there 
and a drop of crazy glue there and if this cartridge fails then I can uh, hopefully uh, cut it, pry it out and replace it with a new one. At any rate, uh, I wanted to just demonstrate what I've been able to accomplish with this. You'll pardon the oversized mat. I borrowed this from a Morantz turntable that I have. I have two um, replacement, I'm not sure what the materials are, uh, uh, turntable mats coming from Amazon. They were very inexpensive and I'm not anticipating that they'll be really satisfactory. But at any rate, they're coming and if necessary I can order uh, cork ones and things like that. So I wanted to demonstrate two things. One, how this turntable works. I'm not sure whether I made a vi video of it before. But the other thing is, and if I can swing the camera around and still show it, I've built this. This is the uh, ceramic cartridge preamp um, that will go in my bench amp when I do have a changer with a ceramic cartridge in it that needs to be tested. Now I've tried many circuits and this is the one and back that off a bit thank you this is the one that I chose to use basically because um, my preamp will be using integrated circuits that run at plus 15 and minus 15 and this happens to run at plus 15 now it doesn't have a particular any kind of compensation for the um, response of the crystal cartridges and it is a bit bright I have found. Um, I also chose not to put the, uh, if I can hold that and show the input capacitor there and it works fine. The problem that I found and I'm not sure whether uh, replacing or inserting that will correct it but when the turntable starts up and when it shuts off there is actually a muting circuit on the changer and when it engages it makes quite a thump. Um, if I can put the or tack in the uh, 10 mic caps and then see if it reduces or eliminates that um, we'll see. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I can do or whether I care. This is basically just for testing purposes and if it makes a thump. Most changers do not have muting circuits in them other than dual. Um, I, I, I may have to correct myself on that but most do not have them. Uh, at any rate there's the circuit and there's the board and I've made it on let's get that tightened in a bit. I've made it on just perf board and it uses, instead of the 2N5458 as the schematic says, I have uh, two SK170s and I've got a lot of them so I decided to use them without modifying the circuit at all. And so there it's, it's uh, working and I'll just demonstrate now if I can without uh, getting copyright shots. So we'll show how it works and it actually works quite well give it a bit of volume not too much and you can see the uh, once serviced oh okay so now once I'm on line it's going to prove to be difficult uh, try that again I'll have to look and see uh, I'm not all that familiar with servicing uh, Phillips um, to me they're not that common Oh dear. Okay, so now it works. Okay, there's a bit of a thump you might have heard. And uh, the fidelity is pretty good. Bass is good and strong. Uh, the upper mids are a little strident. Um, if I was building this into something for regular use, I might try and adjust that or maybe abandon this circuit altogether. It has uh, a queuing device which isn't damped, so you've got to be careful. And uh, 
with this cartridge, which is really the most inexpensive ceramic cartridge I could have come across in, I've got this set uh, at tracking at three grams and I, it's almost unheard of and it tracks very well. Um, I know this record, although it's, it's seen better days being my shop record, happens to be Burt Kempfert uh, and the album is uh, The Magic Music of Faraway Places and I pretty well adore anything that Burt Kempfert produced. If you're not familiar with him, then Google. He was very popular in the uh, late 50s, early 60s. Had a lot of string of hits that lopped over into popular music. Um, and uh, I just uh, adore his uh, arrangements and some of the songs. Like The very first one, to be a little off topic here, that I heard on the radio in 1960 was That Happy Feeling. And it is a simple piece but layered with many, many instruments being added and removed and uh, it was indeed that happy feeling. I fell in love with it, bought the album right away and it was mono of course in, in the uh, in 1960 and then subsequently about 25 years later I found one at a, a bargain bin in a music uh, record store and I immediately bought the stereo version of it. So I've got that. Um, I, all of these ones that I have of him were played on <laughs> less than stellar music uh, record players. Let me uh, push that over a bit. Oh my goodness, I cued it up right. So the, uh, I've got the treble trimmed a bit, the bass full on, but it works very well and I'm pleased with the fidelity enough for what my needs are on it. So, again, I can't play too much. We'll see if I can... I'll turn that right down and uh, let you see that it does uh, go through and trips with no problem at all, even at three grams. Um, the original cartridge, if I can say that the um, this new cartridge and the original elements were about the same, uh, the original tracking was at about six grams, and I thought, mm, I think I can do better than that. So, um, there we go. Okay. It struggles a wee bit during the cycle, but it's pretty good. And I, I don't want to consider having to replace that either. It makes things way too expensive. At any rate, this, because these things were designed for their own cartridges exclusively, the tracking is not adjustable. However, the spring um, tracking, uh, tracking spring uh, is attached to a little bent piece of metal on the back of the tone arm. So I took a chance and just bent that back a little bit and lo and behold it hit right at three grams and I think I'm satisfied with that at three grams. So that's it. Uh, it's going to have to wait till next spring for a base to be made for it but I am going to do that. Uh, every single old changer that I've got I'm going to make an effort to resuscitate um, whether they become shelf queens or whether somebody wants to buy it and use it uh, for nostalgia's sake, we'll just have to see. Um, so far, uh, the duel has been up for sale and I've only had one inquiry and that didn't pan out to anything. So we'll just do it. The next thing I'm going to bring up, because I'm still dealing with my arm in a sling, and I can't seem to do much of what I really want to do. Uh, somehow I can work on these things without uh, overtaxing that arm. And the next one is a Telefunken. I'm not sure who made it. Uh, once I bring it up here I can show what it is and uh, what it will take to um, get it uh, running again, if at all possible. I've had it for a while. It's got a 
a broken head shell on the tone arm, so I'm not sure what I can do with that. I just sort of, it came in with a bunch of stuff that I bought, and I'm, I just stuck it downstairs. At any rate, that's the Phillips. Uh, I don't even know what the model number is. It's just Phillips. They had the model number B underneath, and I'm not going to haul this over just to see that. At any rate, uh, thank you for watching. Have a rest of a good day. Uh, take care, and we'll see you soon.